Boker Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, we want to come back to the report that UNHA has, re has released about the um, Turkish military along with uh, other forces being hit there inside of Syria near Al-Bab uh, last night. It still has not made mainstream media, and I might have a, a, an explanation for that. Uh, of course, Anha is a, uh, from, from what I can gather, it is a Kurdish news site there inside of Syria. Uh, it's brought, it brings out some very good stories. Uh, I've, I've done a lot of research on this company, uh, trying to get a little bit more answers as to why this has not made mainstream media. Uh, but anyway, according to the report here, Al-Bab, seven Turkish soldiers and eight other mercenaries were killed in unknown air raid on northern villages of Al-Bab. City, while the damages was not assessed yet on the Turkish army base of Ak, uh, Akhtarin. Now, I, I've been able to find some just little bits and pieces here and there. Uh, I found one place where Turkey is saying that the Syrian army actually conducted this airstrike. The Syrian army and the Russians are saying they have not uh, done this at all, uh, but also. Um, Jumping over here real quick, uh, here, this guy right now, H H Hassein Bozan, uh, stated that I made a phone call in the morning to the chairman of the military council. He told me last night that the uh, FSA, that's the Free Syrian Army, said an airstrike to the side of Akhtaran. So there was an airstrike there from what we can gather there. Uh, if you look at this originally in his uh, first statement, he says, Octron, uncertain nationality aircraft hit near the TAF supported, uh, which is the Turkish Air Force supported uh, Free Syrian Army units. Uh, then he goes on to say in this right here that he called this morning, made a telephone call to the, uh, the council there. I'm assuming the Turkish council because he's writing in the Turkish language right here. Uh, only to find out that uh, they said that, the, uh, that last night the Free Syrian Army said an airstrike to the side of Akhtaran. Now, if you go back to the article here, though, and there's, they've published many articles about this, as local sources said that the bombardment on villages of Sosian, Sheik, uh, Awan, and uh, Kazwan yesterday left seven Turkish soldiers dead and eight of their mercenaries, which no doubt Free Syrian Army in this case here, and many others were wounded too. The Turkish Army uh, dead and wounded soldiers were soon taken to Kilis Hospital to receive medical treatment. Uh, the results of the bombardment of the Turkish base of Akhtaran have not come to light yet. And that's exactly what we're finding out as well. It's still something that is not being uh, played out. No one is talking about it thus far. Uh, we've done as much research on this as we possibly can. Um, here again, another one that just popped up since I put this together. Syrian anonymous warplanes bombed Turkey military positions in uh, Sochian. Now, see, that was the other name in the article that I have not looked up as of yet. Now, if you notice, this time we actually have a photograph. Now, whether this is a file photo or not, uh, I cannot say, but they are giving us the, uh, uh, of course, they're still citing uh, Anha News as far as the source for this. Uh, again, I don't know if the photo has anything to do with it or not, uh, but we'll have to wait to see. Now, there is another report, though, this morning coming out, and this is actually on several news sites already. Uh, DNA is what I got it off of. Two Turkish soldiers were killed in a bomb blast near Syria's El Bab, according to a report. Now, one report is also saying that it was an IED, a roadside device that did it, and this one here says that it was a car bomb. The two Turkish soldiers were killed and one seriously wounded in a vehicle a uh, born bomb attack near the Islamic State controlled town of Al Bab in northern Syria. Broadcaster CNN Turk reported on Wednesday uh, the attack occurred as Syrian rebels, backed by Turkish troops, aircraft, and artillery, besieged Al Bab as part of a three month old Euphrates shield operation to push Islamic State and Kurdish military forces away from Turkey's border region. Now, it's still interesting to note whether or not Syria or Russia has anything to do with it. I kind of wonder. Uh, is if it's not a possibility that the uh, you know the the coalition may be trying to drag um, themselves into this conflict by using a rogue attack on them, uh, and yet it be a totally unidentified aircraft, especially if it's high, flying high enough, dropping the bombs 
to make it look like it's someone else. Uh, <clears throat> another thing that caught my attention this morning on uh, secrets of the, of the fed.com, CNN has been caught staging new segments on Syria with crisis actors. Now, I don't know if I could actually go as far as say CNN is the one guilty of it, but definitely the people that they're using in the field certainly are guilty of uh, giving them a bunch of false news. And Anderson Cooper on CNN have, as they say, caught staging fake news about Syria to justify military intervention. And that's a very good possibility. In this particular video right here, uh, this guy here, um, he is waiting on CNN to come on. Uh, he states several times in here, there's no gunfires of yet, by the way, but he's going to tell them, uh, once I get on, start shooting. They want to make it good. He even tells them at one point, bring a mattress. Um, let me see if we can catch one of the statements here for you. Um, oh. I'm waiting at the moment, he says in English. No. He's waiting for CNN to get him on the phone. Now, all you can hear in the background is Arabic prayers. Um, I wouldn't expect if you had a lot of bombing going off that you'd be hearing a lot of Arabic prayers uh, like that. Did you tell him to get the gunfire ready, he says. Okay, that's what he says there. No, no, not yet. Um, just let him shoot, he says. And so then he actually, there's an explosion right after that. So they're trying to make it look like it's really happening. But he's just saying, here's a rerun. Oh, wait a minute. Let me go past that part there. Um, even the cameraman's line. Uh, let me sketch you what the cameraman actually stated there, though. Cameraman, tell them that they are falling down and we're taking, taking bodies from underneath them. So the cameraman suggests what he should tell CNN. This is amazing. Even the cameraman's lying, the article says here. He finally gets CNN on the phone, right? And this is what it looks like with CNN. There could be as many as 200 dead dead just in the last hour or two. We have 200 dead in about three hours. In the first half an hour, we've got 40 dead. In the first half an hour, and we got the video up on YouTube. We have 200 dead in about three hours. In the first half an hour, we've got 40 dead. In the first half an hour, and we got the video up on YouTube. See, now he's in a war zone, as the uh, the the uh, site brings out. This is on Linkus.com, and we'll post this in the uh, the description below. I just think it's kind of interesting. And by the way. They do show uh, on several occasions where he's done this here. There's another one where he's on. And, of course, they continue to fabricate their reports. Now, by the way, um, Aleppo has actually pretty much been freed as of now. Uh, but also there has been a Russian colonel that was killed in the... Uh, uh, the, the fighting uh, for East Aleppo says Russian colonel killed in Syria was helping Syrian army unit to train servicemen. The Russian colonel uh, Ruslan Galitsky killed in Syria's Aleppo was helping a Syrian uh, army, uh, army unit to train servicemen, the Russian defense ministry said Wednesday. Uh, colonel Galitsky died in the hospital as a result of serious wounded uh, wounds. Uh, Russian combat medics fought for his life for several days. The officer was wounded in a shelling of the military, the so-called opposition of the residential district of western Aleppo, the Russian Defense Ministry said in a statement there. So a high-ranking uh, colonel for the Russian military has been killed in Aleppo there amongst all this uh, serious fighting. Uh, 21st Century Wire uh, is reporting that Aleppo's old city is now fully liberated by the Syrian army. Remaining terrorists are in retreat. Uh, that came out today. Uh, I, I believe this is going to be Vanessa Bealey reporting here on this. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's Damascus. And a stunning development today. 21 Wire has received reports from on the ground in Syria that remaining rebel militants have fled the old city of Aleppo, even leaving behind substantial amount of equipment and weapons as the Syrian Arab army advances in the remaining terrorist held neighborhoods, the eastern part of Syria's largest city there. Um, uh, SAA sources 
have confirmed that the old citadel is now fully liberated with remaining pockets to be cleansed by tomorrow Wednesday. Uh, special contributor Vanessa Billy is currently in Damascus waiting to head to Aleppo. She had this to say on the situation and the news coming from the Syrian TV channels and statements from the Syrian Arab army. Uh, since I arrived in Damascus Monday the 5th of December there has been a simmering of excitement from all members of society and a sense of impending victory in Aleppo. That anticipation seems to have been uh, uh, satiated tonight as news is coming into the Syrian Arab army is pushing home its advantage and sweeping clean uh, the remaining pockets of terrorist resistance against the SSA uh, advances supported by the uh, allies from Iran, Russia, and Hezbollah. Uh, do be praying for Vanessa Bealey. She's a very brave uh, uh, reporter, and uh, we have really enjoyed some of her incredible insights there. Love to have her on Israeli News Live there, but I know that that is a compromising situation for her. Um, she has reported before that she would like to be here, but it, it would compromise her abilities to get in and out of Syria there. Uh, one last part here also, Enha News, uh, uh, Hawar News Agency, uh, Sheikh Maksud Council Societies in Europe supplied mercenaries with chemicals. Um, that is something that this man right here is claiming that uh, the co-chair of Teb Dem Council and Sheikh uh, Maksud accused the European Union and Turkey of providing facilities for societies that back the national coalition and supply them with chemical weapons. Uh, Sheikho called the international community to punish those committing crimes against humanity in the city of Aleppo. Uh, Sheikho said that the Syrian National Coalition affiliated mercenaries have targeted the uh, overcrowded neighborhood of Sheikh Maksud with chemicals three times over this year. The neighborhood has been hit three times in March, April, and in November, causing dozens of suffocations and poison cases among residents. As we've reported before in the past, Aaron Erdem was one of the main sources, a uh, former Turkish uh, parliament member that exposed how chemical weapons were coming through Turkey uh, by the hand of ISIS inside of Syria to be used on the civilian, civilian population there to justify uh, NATO intervention. And again, we have yet another compelling article here uh, on Hawar News Agency uh, reporting that indeed it is still being blamed on Turkey and now even the European Union. Uh, not saying that everybody in the European Union would be guilty of that, but uh, he clearly puts that on their responsibility. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Update on the situation again inside of Syria. And uh, we will reach out and see if we can't find out some information about this uh, now that we have our own source there on the ground inside of uh, Syria uh, to see if we can confirm this airstrike that has happened on El Al Bab. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.